What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because we're bringing you one of my favorite decks of all time and that is ABC. Now fun fact for anyone who didn't know, one of my first tops was actually with ABC way back in 2016 when the deck came out and because it's meta again in today's format thanks to the Therions, I'm super excited to be bringing you guys this deck. So if you guys enjoy these videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content. We're back to our regular program. You're going to see a combo video tomorrow for ABC. So today's a deck profile. Tomorrow's going to be the combo video. And then we've got a bunch of cool stuff coming this week. I hope you guys do enjoy it all. I don't want to keep you guys waiting for too long though. I'm excited to get into it. So with that, let's get into the deck profile. Okay, so to get into the profile here, of course, ABC, one of my favorite decks of all time, we are starting with two A Assault Core, three B Buster Drake, and two C Crush Wyvern. So I decided to play these ratios. And the reason I decided to play these ratios was mostly because the C and the a really are bricks in your hand and you're going to keep recycling them anyways the b is the only real one you ever want to draw if you do draw one but in general the pieces aren't always the best to draw so for that reason you want to cut down on the a and the c there was actually a part of me that wanted to play one c but i just couldn't do it i couldn't do it so we are playing two a three b and two c as well as two union driver now union driver was a card that i kept playing at one but every time i played it at one i drew it and i'm like wow i can't combo so because of that reason i did want to play it at too. as you guys can see we're also playing 44 cards in the main deck so there is less of a chance of drawing it of course but at the same time i still couldn't cut it to one i just every time i did it it just hurt too much when you drew it i know the card's a brick but it's not the worst thing in your hand keep in mind that c can still summon it from your hand and sometimes you can use it to push for extra damage but yeah i do like two union driver and i'm playing three theory on king regulus now this is going to be what i need to talk about i think a little bit more because people are usually on two theory on king regulus from what i've seen as well as three of the field spell i actually like to do it the opposite way and the reason i like to do that is one i would actually funny enough rather draw the theory on king regulus because sometimes if i draw the regulus with a union hanger it means that i can keep the union hanger on the board which means that when i go into my abc and i tag out i can still get the union hanger effects going off but also it's because if i play three of the field spell and you're activating the field spell to search it, there's also a lot of potential where your opponent has a droll and lockbird or something like that and then you start to encounter issues and on top of that it's always going to be live especially if you open like a right of artemisia and then you go into your fateful adventure right you you can pitch a piece at any point pretty much and then have three on king regulus live in your hand and this way you don't have to necessarily search just put yourself in that position now don't get me wrong i'm still playing two of the field spells so you're not going to cut the field spell completely but i'm playing two of the field spell because again like i said i would rather have the uni hanger on the board sometimes so yeah three uni hanger but again these are ratios that I know people like to switch around. Some people like two regulus as well as three of the field spell. I personally like three regulus and two of the field spell. Really up to you guys what you guys prefer, but this is what I like. And then of course one terraforming. So that's the thing though. At the end of the day, if you have the terraforming as well, it's like it technically counts as a third one if you need it for the theory on field spell. So either way it works, but yeah, so we are playing one terraforming. And then of course we're playing triple unauthorized reactivation. This card is insanely powerful. The nice thing about this card, it makes it so that you don't have to have union hanger to combo. And what I mean by that is if you open a piece, plus unauthorized reactivation essentially what ends up happening is you have the full combo anyways but the really nice thing about this card as well is that if you have this card on top of your combo you can actually end up activating this card target your abc buster dragon equip a b buster drake and then this way you don't lose the stuff like super polymerization and other really powerful spell cards in the game because b buster drake is going to make abc dragon buster unaffected by spell effects now if you think your opponent is going to have monster removal then essentially what you can do is you can equip a instead b is usually the best one but if you know they're not playing like super poly and stuff like that you can equip a if they're playing a bunch of traps you can actually equip c as well so this way your abc buster dragon is not affected by any trap card so it's really up to you there's a lot of flexibility and keep in mind when you do end up tagging out with the buster dragon what ends up happening is you're going to get the pieces effects that were essentially unequipped and sent to the graveyard because you're tagging out then the equipped piece is going to get sent to the graveyard which means you can get that effect so this card's insanely powerful then we are playing hand traps i know some people like to minimize on hand traps but i actually want to play a little bit of more of them because for a couple reasons really but first of all i think it's really powerful of course three ash is the best hand trap right now in the game three impermanent three dd crow i think dd crows just has so much versatility against so many different decks which is why i like to play this but another reason i like to play these is because i do like to run the cross out now keep in mind although this deck does have a lot of gas and has a lot of really powerful cards in it it can sometimes lose with these kind of abc hands especially because you're playing the pieces right and then there's always chances you end up breaking on pieces and for that reason i do end up liking to play cross out designator because it ensures that your combo is going to go off it stops anything like an imperm from hitting your platinum gadget because sometimes you do need the platinum gadget to finish your combo right so it stops like imperms it stops potential ash and there's a lot of really good reasons why i like to play the cross out but that's also 
a really nice thing because it gives me the opportunity to play hand traps, which means that my opponents are going to have a rough time because a lot of your cards are one card starters. Union Hanger is a one card starter. Your Water Enchanter is a one card starter. And you can even say two card starters because if you open any piece plus unauthorized reactivation, that's also a starter for you. It also helps you push through. So for that reason, I do like to have these hand traps in there because like I can open one card combos, but then I can also open three hand traps. And what are you going to do after that? Right? So I really like these lineup. I don't think I would change this lineup. So yeah, of course, three cross out as well as the one call by the grave. Again, just hand trap hate. And then we are playing the adventure package. So we're playing three water enchantress, two griffin rider, three right of artemisia, one fateful adventure, as well as one Draco back. So the only thing I think I have to explain here really is two griffin rider over just one. Now I actually seen some builds that play one griffin rider and one illegal knight. Illegal knight, especially for going second is a pretty decent card. But I will say this, the reason I really like two wandering griffin is because essentially what griffin does is it gives you a main deck out to the flunderies matchup. So if the flunderies boards end up on a barrier statue, you kind of have an issue playing through a barrier statue and wandering griffin helps you push through that because what ends up happening is if they end up on a barrier statue and Thunder is a very prevalent deck in today's format right you can start each turn by special summoning the griffin rider and then threaten the battle phase so if they have anything like a book of moon or any cards to stop that your attack what ends up happening is you now have threatened it with the wandering griffin and they have to stop the wandering griffin before you keep going so if they don't stop the wandering griffin what ends up happening is you just go into battle phase you attack over the barrier statue you go into main phase two and then you continue to combo that's why i really like the two wandering griffin this is something that i've been testing i've been really liking especially against a lot of random matchups but this card also helps you play through hand traps and the way it does that essentially is because at the end of the day if you have a griffin rider in hand and potentially like a piece and you're worried about a hand trap let's say you don't have a cross out in your hand or a call by the grave you can special the griffin rider summon the piece and let's say it's a b right and then worst case scenario if they end up having a hand trap for like a uni hanger or or whatever it else it is at least you have two monsters on the board which means that you can still go into your extra deck which means you can still get the pieces effects off the graveyard and then you can keep going from there so i do like the two wandering griffin rider so that's it for the main deck it's a 44 card main deck and then moving on to the extra deck here we are playing two abc dragon balls so we're not playing three if you play prosperity you guys notice that i'm not actually playing prosperity which you can definitely play prosperity in this deck i don't think you need to though this deck has so much consistency but yes you, you can play prosperity if you want to but i just really like this build but if you are playing prosperity of course you want to be playing three abc dragon buster because you're always going to banish one off the prosperity anyways right but here we're just going to be playing two one platinum gadget one ip masquerina you always want to be ending your boards on ip because ending on ip means that after you tag out with your buster dragon you can use ip to either use their monsters which helps you break boards to go into an underworld goddess but you can also use your own monsters to go into like an apollo and then what ends up happening is now you're putting more negates on your side of the field so ip is a great card one phoenix one cerberus one unicorn of course these are pretty standard just toolbox cards one apollo as well as one access code now again you always have access to these because apollo like i said you can use it with the ip but if you have your pieces on the field let's say you tag out your buster on the end phase you have four materials on the board right four materials on the board means you can go into something like a unicorn you can bounce a card or shuffle a card if you want to pop a card with phoenix you can do whatever there and then go into access code and try to gain from there so this deck is really powerful because once it goes into turns two and turns three especially it gets steamrolling and it just literally just gets stronger and stronger so yeah you always are going to be playing these one underworld goddess of course like i said for the ip play this card's insanely powerful in this deck and then this is just more like toolbox cards that honestly you can put anything in for these cards but we are playing the one line our line is a great card you can sometimes in the mirror match it could come up so this card is pretty powerful in that sense you're playing one barricade board blocker barricade board blocker is good sometimes for just the discard so you do want to play this one tornado dragon this is just fully toolbox and then this is what i mean there's a lot of cards in this like tornado dragon i would say line is one of those cards as well that you can honestly just cut for other things if you wanted to but i just like the toolbox i like the opportunity that i can go into these but a card that i would not cut at all is baguska baguska is great into the despia matchup you literally make this all the time and sometimes you would rather make this than your abc buster dragon into the despia matchup because they can't play through this if they don't have an imperm if they don't have a droplet to answer this they're not playing through this so baguska is so so powerful and then because we are playing the baguska we're playing the tornado dragon we're also playing the one zeus so i just like the zeus is just a card that can come up it doesn't always come up and if you're playing like the hulk versions and by the way i don't like the hulk version because i know i'm gonna get that comment i don't like the hulk version because if you play that version you have to commit to the torque toon gear play and then you kind of have a problem because now it's like you can't pivot off that play whereas with this deck like you know you still have your abc plays you don't have to necessarily go into the hulk go into the dag den and keep going from there and essentially with that hulk combo like you you're kind of relying on opening like a right of artemisia to get an omni negate up before you go into hulk because otherwise you, the deck is just really fragile if you do that so that's why i don't play the hulk combo myself but obviously if you guys were playing that then you would have some synchros in here but that's what i mean this extra deck is actually not that tight because outside of the few cards i would say abc 
to Underworld Goddess here you really need, and you would really need the Baguska. But there's like three to four cards in this extra deck that you can honestly just play with because you don't really need anything outside of the main pieces, and these are all just toolbox cards. Just before I let you guys go here, the really nice thing about this deck is there's just so many different ways to play it, but they're all really consistent and they're all really powerful. Again, if you guys wanted to play Prosperity, you guys can fit this in here. I personally don't like Droplet in the main deck. Droplet's a really good side deck card right now. I don't like it in the main deck, but if you guys wanted to play Droplet, you guys can play Droplet in here as well. There's just so many different card options you guys can play in this. Again, like I said, if you wanted to do the Hulk combo, you guys could do the Hulk combo. I personally don't like it, but you guys can do the Hulk combo in this as well. There's just so many different ways to play this deck because it's just so consistent. Again, if you don't like the hand traps, right, and you want to cut out some of the hand traps for a different engine, you guys can do that as well. Like that's why this deck is so powerful is because you just have a bunch of one card starters, water and changes, one card starter, uni hanger, one card starter, right? Or you have two card starters because you can have like a B or a C plus an unauthorized reactivation. Doesn't matter what piece you can have any piece plus unauthorized reactivation. That is your combo. So there's just so many different ways to play these hands out and play this deck. So that's why really there's a lot of flex spots. And that's just what I love about ABC. This deck is amazing. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. Now the thing about ABC, and I think I mentioned this in the deck profile, but I want to say it now again too, is that there's so many different ways you guys can build the deck now because there's just so many powerful cards in the deck. And really depending on what you use, the deck is still going to go and accomplish the same thing, which is put up insanely powerful boards. It can play really well going second as well. And so this deck is very, very fun. It's very, very meta. And I'm super excited that it's back in the meta game because it's one of my favorite decks ever. So I hope you guys did enjoy. If you guys have any suggestions, any ideas, let me know in the comment section down below. That's how we get better together as a community. Thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. And with that, Spanko, I don't know. Peace.